Loose in town have an injury crisis. Wait, the season hasn't even started. How can we have an injury crisis? But that's the case. Loose in town have a defensive injury crisis ahead of the season starting. Look, injuries happen. We're all humans, and especially when you're an athlete that's running a lot and uh, making quick turns, th these things happen, don't they? But I, I want to talk about the extent of the injuries and, and the lack of communication of the injuries. So before I start, if you enjoy the content from the We Are Losing Town podcast, such as former player interviews and uh, our podcasts, we're going to have a Loose in Town Ladies podcast. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out. Also, a shout out to our audio partners, Blackstar and Carry On. They, they make us sound great, uh, give us all the goodies that we need to record a podcast. Also, a big shout out to the record shop in Amersham, our podcast sponsor. If you're ever in Amersham and you're a collector of vinyl records, or you just want to go and have a look at their selection of musical instruments going down. It's absolutely incredible. That's the record shop in Amersham. So looking at the, the injury record, I remember back in the day when you'd open up a program and you'd see uh, from the from the physio room by Bruce Sewell or Clive Goodyear, and they'd, they'd talk and, and uh, take you through what was going on in terms of the injuries. However, you flick through a program these days and there is no information about what's happening with the injuries. It's it's very frustrating because, again, you, you don't get that communication from the club about what's happened or the extent of the injury. It's always a case of the players sending out messages from their personal Instagram accounts or Twitter accounts. In the case of Sambi Lakonga last season, the club didn't let us know that he'd be out for an extended period of time. For both of Sambi's injuries, we found out through his uh, his Instagram, which uh, is very, very strange. You know, sometimes you'd expect the club to put something out about it. I won't talk about Tom Lockyer. Look, Tom Lockyer is a completely different situation. My opinion is he needs to take as long as he needs to, to, to return to football. Would I personally like to see him play again? I, I'd, look, I'd love to see Tom Lockyer play again. He He's an absolute warrior, tremendous player. But do I want to see him play with the possibility that it could happen a third time? Even with all the hardware that he has now, there is a reality that it could happen again. Tom Lockyer, as I said, is a completely different story. Now, looking at Amari Bell, so he... He was uh, substituted against Aston Villa in the fifth minute, and this was after coming off in the first half against Man City in that FA Cup game. He was a 90-minute player, and then when he had to come off, because we were obviously in the, the grips of a defensive crisis last season, Amari had to play. And then Amari snapped a, a tendon in his hamstring, and he had to have surgery. But how did we find out about this? I think the club might have mentioned something, but... There were no updates. The updates were from Amari Bell. He set up his own YouTube page and was documenting his recovery, which it's a really great watch. And you see a lot of behind the scenes footage of what it's like being a recovering footballer at Luton Town. He, he's recovering to schedule. Uh, Rob Edwards did say that, you know, he's the furthest ahead of the other defenders that are currently injured. And we could see him in the early weeks of the season. Now, now come the issues. Uh, Marvellous Nakamba, Reese Burke, and Mads Anderson. I'll start with Reese Burke. Reese Burke had a great season last year. We all know that Reese has had issues with injuries, stringing games together. But last season, Reese Burke stepped up. He put in great performances when we needed him to. But then the final game of the season, well, second last game of the season against West Ham, he goes off in the 87th minute, and the club mentions that he had. A Achilles issue but the next thing we see is the the lap of honor um, where, where we all wanted to let the players know how well they did throughout the season even though they missed out on survival and Reese Burke had a boot on and now we're hearing Reese Burke is a couple of weeks behind Amari Bell okay that, that's fine look he, he might have had uh, surgery on his Achilles who knows but that that's fair 
and now Marvelous Nakamba. So we found out that Marvelous Nakamba had a meniscal surgery when he put it out on his own Instagram, post-surgery, which is fair. Like men meniscus are very, um, very fragile. They go. I've, I've done, I've done it twice on, on both knees. I've had surgery. It happens. However, the club didn't discuss it until long after that had happened, and he was at, Rob Edwards was asked about it in a press conference. But it's been quite a while now, and in pre-season, Marvellous Nakamba has been pictured with another big dressing on his knee. So has he had more surgery? Nothing else has come of this. Uh, we haven't heard anything. It would be great if the club could let us know, but again, then we're moving on to Mads Anderson, who... The enigma of Mads Anderson. What, what is happening with him? He, he went off to Denmark to do his recovery, which is fair, you know, if, if there are good uh, hospitals and clinics that can do that, fair play to Mads. And he was hopeful that he would make it back for the tail end of the season. The club even said that. Rob Edwards said that. Now he's the furthest back in the rehabilitation. He's been out on the grass for ages. A bit of communication would be good, but I don't understand what is happening in terms of these setbacks from the injuries. It is frustrating as a supporter being on the outside, not being told what's happening. Look, there are some caveats to these issues, and that being that are we expecting too much information from football clubs these days? Potentially. In this age of everything being available, the touch of a button and Fabrizio Romano's and people having information that maybe they shouldn't have. That is the reality of the situation. Maybe the club don't want to release this information just because we expect it. Also, the club may be doing this to protect the, the privacy of the player in question leaving it up to the player to announce their own injury or their rehabilitation on their personal social media. And that's fine as well. It would just be interesting to know the club's stance on it. If the club wants to protect privacy, then that's fair. But are the club providing enough information or not? Like, what are your thoughts about this? Do we have any right to this information? Though those are just my thoughts about uh, the current injury crisis. Look transfer issues are, com are completely different. I'll, I'll reserve judgment on that until September the 1st and see if we can bring in uh, some reinforcements that are much needed. In my opinion, we need one centre back and we have been linked to Mark McGuinness from reputable journalists from Cardiff Online. He could go about filling the gap. Ted Mengi, he went off in, in our final preseason game against Celso Vigo Hopefully he's back, because we do need defenders quite desperately. As mentioned, we do have a defensive injury crisis. Look, this isn't a moan. I'm not moaning right here, but I do want to hear your thoughts in the comment section. Please get involved in the comments, like this video, subscribe to our channel, and also a big shout out to Blackstar and Carry On, our audio partners, and also to our pod sponsor, The Record Shop in Amersham. Check them out. As always, come on you hatters.